right. So, right, here's the thing. Um, I've decided to do this, again, um, tentatively penciled in last one, because um, I'm betraying my sensibilities, and I'm going to see episode 9 on the opening day. The, the local cinema does cheap tickets, so I thought I might as well. But then uh, the thing is, I kind of thought if I see episode 9, it might answer questions I have about this, and therefore taint what I've been doing so far with this, where I might ask a question, and then it's answered in episode 9, um, so I can't have the, the question anymore, because it's already been answered. So it's not just like um, looking at this film on its own, it's now, you know, there's more information now to fill in the blanks. So, uh, I mean, which wouldn't be a problem. It's not going to be a problem if episode 9 fixes lots of stuff. But uh, it might change the way we look at this when this is all we've got at the moment. So I kind of wanted to try and um, change tact on this. Because obviously, um, what, what are we five or six hours in and we're one hour into this so an hour and a half left so I'm not going to be able to do the carrying on doing ten minutes at a time so what I figured I'd do is try to do a maybe do a brief overview of everything so instead of actually watching the whole thing frame by frame I'm gonna back up to oh it's different on the, this machine I don't know what button. Oh, there we go. I've done it. So if I go to the scene selection and um, loud, it's too loud. Okay. So if I go to the scene selection and do it like this, do it scene by scene. Maybe we can move quicker, potentially. Okay. So we've got to. Um, I'm guessing this is where it thinks we are in the movie. So about halfway through. Um, so, just a quick recap, I suppose, of, uh, yeah, um, something quite interesting that I pointed out the other day. Um, so there's, there's kind of a theme throughout the movie of destroy the past, get rid of it, and have new stuff. And uh, there's actually, like, an interesting nuance to it that I've um, kind of not said anything about. Uh, cause I think the, the main time that kind of... You know, Kylo is the one that explicitly says, "You know, kill the past, destroy it if you have to, all this, and let's let's you know, he's the one." That's, so it's, um, I mean, the first time I watched it, I thought, "Well, he's the villain. The villain is saying that." So we probably shouldn't take that as our life lesson. Oh, Bruno's here again. Um, so we shouldn't take that as our life lesson because the bad guy's saying that. Um, why is it so dark? Oh, that's, is that better? Okay. Um, but there's there's also kind of a yeah there's an interesting nuance to it where which is set up in the first scene with Poe's silly mission. Um, Poe represents the old ways of doing things where you know you do a, you, you you have a plan that's just crazy enough to work or whatever. Um, you break the rules, you do the the maverick thing, uh, and then at the end of it you save the day even though you broke the rules and so no one gets in trouble but at that time he did it and he got in trouble because it didn't really work out and um, so he was doing things the old way and uh, he kind of thought well if we look at this the old way this was a win but Leia's looking at the um, how many ships they lost how many people they lost and, said, and thinks you know this was not a win we didn't, we didn't win the, the idea we're, we're trying to save lives so to blow up their ship at the cost of how many lives wasn't a win. It wasn't worth it. Um, so there's, so there's on, on the on the good side, there's, you know, the old stuff has its place, but um, you know we shouldn't we should keep some of it, but not only the good bits of it. Whereas Kylo's view is all the old stuff is bad. Get rid of all the old stuff. Let's all be new. Um, so the, with the good guys, that theme runs through. It starts with Poe losing people in that battle to try and win, and then it kind of mirrors at the end when uh, Finn tries to kill himself to save everybody. Like he, he wants to destroy that cannon to um, 
and then Rose says the famous line of, um, you know, well, I don't even want to repeat it, but um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, we would destroy, don't destroy what we hate, save what we love. And that's, yeah, that completely mirrors what happened right at the beginning with Leia counting how many lives are lost. Um, and the uh, opposite thing of Kylo just being, yeah, destroy everything. Um, and then there's a nice kind of thing with Luke. Uh, you know, he wants to destroy, he wants to end the Jedi, he wants to destroy the texts and everything. Um, so he, at that, and the, there's a there's a comment from Snoke where Snoke says, oh, I can't believe Skywalker was so wise. So it, it kind of looks like for a bit, Skywalker Luke is, is doing the wrong thing because he's doing what the bad guys think is a good idea. Um, so that's, that's kind of a whole interesting thing there. Um, so yeah, we're, we're here now. We've got to this uh, first time um, of the flashback, Luke raising his lightsaber. And um, see, it's, it's, it's weird because of the whole, you know, we know Luke as the guy who sees the good invader, wants to save him. Um, but, and then here he's like, he, for a moment, I, 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 can, I get it, he wants to kill Vader before he's born, kind of thing. And that makes sense. Um, just for a moment, but then he c comes back to his senses, he's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, but at that point it's too late because he's already holding a lightsaber over his nephew's face. And his nephew gets the, I don't want to say the wrong idea, because, you know, <laughs> what what other idea are you going to take being having a lightsaber for you? So for me, I get it. I get that um, Luke had that feeling for a moment. That makes sense. And then he went, came back into his hopeful self, um, his good guy self, and didn't do it. That makes sense. But I still kind of think turning on the lightsaber might have been a step too far. I don't, I don't know. Um, wouldn't you think about it before drawing your weapon? I don't know. It's, it's odd. It's just odd. I mean, then the whole thing wouldn't have happened if you hadn't pulled the lightsaber out. Um, could have been a whole different scene if Kylo or Ben wakes up and just sees his uncle standing over him, staring at him. Been a whole different kind of awkward. Um, so yeah, it comes back to that. Uh, it comes back to that a couple of times. As I'm not going to watch it, I'm not going to be able to see the exact nuances of what happens, but um, oh well. Uh, so, 30. Um, so we've got Ray going into the dark side cave, which is just like a mirror of when Luke goes into the dark side tree and sees his true, or the possibility of his true self. Um, so yeah, who knows? She's she's just seeing mirrors of herself, um, and then she finds out. Yeah, her parents were nobody. Um, and I, yeah, I think I said about this before. It's, yeah, it's fine if her parents are nobody, but the, the bigger question is, well, why why was she left on the planet and where her powers come from? If it's not from her parents, who cares? But you know, what's what is going on? Where 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 has she come from? Um, if her parents are a couple of drunks, fine, no problem. But um, yeah, what's going on? This is still a mystery. Um, so we got her with her lightsaber out. Is that part of the same scene, or is that her being trained with Luke? Um, I don't know. If I don't know, can't say anything about it. Uh, the return of Yoda. So that was nice, seeing Yoda come back. Um, so, um, Luke, I think some later... Did Ray take the books out of the tree before Luke went to burn them? Um, something, I, I, I can't really remember. I think she took them out, so it was no big deal when Yoda destroyed the tree. Um, yeah, some people have got a bit of an issue with Yoda using force powers to destroy the tree, which it's like, oh, we've never seen that before. Well, you can't have new force powers, but um, yeah, I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't fly with me really. Um, I think well, the, the, what it comes back to is in the the original movie, Obi Wan saying. Strike me down, Darth. I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. But then, f for the following couple of movies, he just kind of turns up as a ghost and chats. Doesn't do anything particularly powerful, apart from having a sort of omnipresence, I guess. But he doesn't do anything. He doesn't like, show any abilities that prove what he said. Um, 
Unless this was another kind of, oh, from a certain point of view, because he's like working through loot now or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, then it makes perfect sense that um, if a force ghost is more powerful than a human, then he can physically do stuff. My only issue with it is that he uses lightning, and lightning has always been a Sith power, so it's kind of weird to see Yoda, the like, ultimate good Jedi, using a Sith power. So maybe he could have done something else, just crumbled it. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not a big deal, but it's just sort of weird that he, yeah, the good guy's using a. I mean, yes, it's, it's a destructive power, and he was destroying a thing, so <clears throat> yeah, it makes sense from that angle. Um, not going to be, not going to go to the. the um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? I'm not going to. I'm not. Oh, it's not, I'm not going to stand on that hill or whatever. Um, it's it's just a odd choice. But then, yeah, what, what's the alternative? I don't know. Just crush. Even that's going to be it. So, Force Ghost Yoda continues. Like Luke's lessons of uh, you know saying like failure is the one of the best teachers. Um, the did I keep failing? But um, failing's a good thing in a way. Um, I wonder if Ryan Johnson's taken that lesson on board with how badly this movie's gone. But yeah, it's good to see Yoda back. There's no reason to not see Yoda back. He's a Force Ghost now. He can be helpful. Uh, I don't know if there's any time limit for how long he can be a Force Ghost. Um, I do vaguely remember there being a comic in the legends, or what I'd like to call the real canon, <laughs> uh, where Obi-Wan does his last ever Force Ghost visit. Um, it, like, he tells him this is the last time I'm going to... I, I don't know if there's a reason. I don't think I actually read that one, but I just know of it. that He said that's the last time I'm going to see you. Um, so I don't know exactly the reason. If there's if there is a, like a limited amount of times they can see you, or if they they've got a limited lifespan before they have to move on to something else, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean that's in Legends, so Force Ghosts can go forever now. There's no reason Qui Gon couldn't turn up here. I mean he doesn't know who Luke is, but if, yeah, introduce him. Hey, look, I I trained Obi Wan. Hey, we can be friends too. Um, I mean I, I don't know that Liam Neeson would do it. He, d he did turn up for the Clone Wars, so maybe, maybe he'd for the right. I think he's like how Harrison Ford is. Like, I don't want to be in it unless like you're going to use me for something. I don't want to be a cameo. I want to be a um, a real story element, you know. Um, so uh, scene thirty-three, we've got DJ on the ship telling the. Uh, Finn about how they sell weapons to the re uh, the rebels and the Empire. It's not a one-sided thing. Both it's not black and white. It's kind of grey, and that's kind of yeah. It's interesting. Does it belong in Star Wars? Sure, why not? I mean, Star Wars has always been pretty black and white, um, but yeah, the world's not like that. So yeah, we could have shades of grey. Um, I guess there have been some grey so far. Trango Fett, maybe. Um, who else? Um, yeah, some of the like the underground characters have been. Yeah, I'm a good guy, but I do bad things. Or I'm a bad guy and I do good things. Um, there's a interesting deleted scene in, from Return of the Bruno. Bruno, uh, from Return of the Jedi, where um, the Emperor gives the order to the Death Star to shoot Endor, uh, destroy Endor, and the guy's, uh, is it Moff Jerzerod, is there, and he's like, but we've got a legion of our best troops down there, I don't really, that's not, I don't, I don't want to do that, that's not nice, and then, they go, they, they, they start the countdown anyway, because the Emperor's told them, but they, they were, you can, you can see that for a moment, they're all like, wait, no, I don't like this idea, maybe, Maybe we're the baddies, you know. Um, so yeah, this is fine. Introduce a bit of the grey area. That's interesting, a bit different. No problem. Um, I do. I don't know. So the, as the, the, where it's muddy is not saying the rebels as a whole might might be grey rather than you know the rebels are the good guys. Um, 
I suppose this doesn't do it. This, I think this is maybe this is more talking about the Canto bite rich people and partly some corruption within the re rebellion. Necessary corrupt, necessary evil because they're fighting a evil empire. Um, it doesn't quite go as far as that scene in Rogue One where the guy shoots his friend because he thinks that'd be the easiest way to get out of the situation. Um, I suppose he thinks that's the kindest thing to do, and uh, uh, yeah, Rogue One goes a much heavier into the grey area of things. Um, but it's yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Thirty-four. We've got some more Poe stuff. Uh, arguing with Holdo. Um, not sure what this scene is. This I think the mutiny is underway here. Um, yep. No comment because again I don't know what that scene is. We've got Ray upside down. Is this another? Is this the one where um, Swole Kylo Ben topless comes? And she's like, hey, put some clothes on. Um, yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, again, that's another... Uh, was, I'm not sure if I've covered this, but it's the same kind of complaint. This is a new force power. We haven't seen this force power of force, FaceTime, or whatever. We haven't seen this. Why is this here? But like, I think this is just a natural extension of how Luke and Leia have the connection in their minds and they could... Um, I like how Leia knew exactly where Luke was in Empire when he was hanging up. It's like she probably saw a picture of him there, maybe. She knew where he was. She, they can go. It's just a... Maybe it's that, but to the next level. So we kind of have seen this power before. So it, we haven't seen it exactly like this. Um, does pop up in comics again, in, in uh, Legends. So there is some precedent to it. Um, yeah, not no problem with this. It's it's perfectly in keeping with the the law. Uh, Black BB-8. Um, is this them infiltrating the Star Destroyer? I guess so. Um, yeah, I do love a good scene of the good guys dressing up stormtroopers and running around Imperial bases. What can what could be better? Uh, I don't know why it's because that little black BB-8 like is the one that finds them out, and that isn't it. So um, it's fine. Not much to say there. Thirty-seven Phasma. All right, here's here's an issue. So they're like trying to sell the movie on oh, all these strong female characters. First of all, um, you can't see she's the oh, you, oh, you hear a female voice, but like. You give a kid an action figure, they tend to assume it's male. Like, no, yeah, this is this one's a woman. How do you? What do you mean? It's a woman. No, it's boy. No, it's boy. No, this one. Anyone, actually, anyone. You, you, if you should give, so give someone, this is Captain Phasma. Oh, he's cool. No, actually, it's a woman. Every time. Every time. Um, so there should have been a scene where she takes the helmet off, uh, and you can see. It's a. There's no reason why not. I mean, making a point as a woman, um, but yeah, doesn't. That's not really the issue. The issue is the, they're trying to push the strong woman thing. Um, in the first movie, someone points a gun at her head, and she just like, "Yes, I'll do anything you say." So fail. Uh, in this movie, she turns up, and she's the captain of the stormtrooper. She's the, the top commander. She gets into a fight with Finn, who's. But barely a stormtrooper is a janitor who sometimes wears a stormtrooper outfit and she loses so she's like it's like that Boba Fett thing where he's he's got the cool outfit uh, everyone thinks he's cool but he kind of just he gets accidentally killed by blind Han Solo so he's not I mean well, yeah when you frame it like that it's bad I actually like Boba's he's, he's, he's worth a bit more he did the whole tracking Han when no one else could and um, got a few shots off on Empire, and I mean, he, he yeah, he's he's not that bad. But this is this is clearly like yes, cool suit. That's it. Bad character, not a strong character. Doesn't do anything useful. Uh, and again, it's, there's a deleted scene where, like, if they put that in the movie, she could have been a good villain. Where um, 
Finn's about to out her for what happened in the other movie, so she kills all the other stormtroopers that are with her, so no one finds out, and then and then they fight. Um, so that's yeah, that's a bit better, but they cut that out. So, um, wondering if she turns up in the next movie, like oh she survived. Be nice if she does finally get a reason to be a uh, the villain we care about or we think is cool or something um, rather than just complete waste of time uh, yeah totally that's all, that's all she is she's a, re a reason to sell a different action figure and nothing more than that which is a lot of the stuff in these films like oh let's throw in this weird alien let's throw in this cute thing let's put this in here like the um, the red stormtroopers coming up in the next one I bet they're just I doubt they're going to do anything particularly special except be red but it's just a, yep, now I have to buy another ten red stormtroopers because uh, you can't just have one you have to have a squad um, uh, 38 we've got our other two strong women um Leia, Leia, I think is fine. Leia's great. Leia, need, yeah, she's always been, she's always been Leia, and we love Leia. So good, good, good. Holdo, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. It's again, it's bad characterization, which mentioned earlier. Like, all you needed was the little thing of um, there's a spy on board, and we can't trust anyone except for the highest ranking, of, of, highest ranking officers, and that's why we're not sharing the plan. Something like that and then we'd be a bit more on board and a bit less of the kind of snarkiness that's um, it's, it's not an endearing kind of sarcasm it's just a horrible one <laughs> like when Leia's a bit sarky she's she's cute with it when Holdo's snarky she's she's not so some maybe it's, some people can do it some people can't uh, maybe there's a, there's a way of doing it that's you know, we're both in on the joke, we're both having fun here. Um, Holder doesn't get away with it. Um, okay, 24 minutes in and we are... Oh, this is, this is going well, this is going well. Okay, so scene 39. Ray confronts Snoke. So this is... Um, that, that's, this is that scene. So we've got um, the... Uh, So there's a lot. There's a lot in this scene that's just a mess. Um, so Snoke's got the whole thing of like, oh, I can see everything, I know everything, and but then he doesn't see the like. Oh, I'm going to look at that lightsaber, but I can't see that lightsaber that's going to come into me and kill. Me. What do you mean? So you just said you can see everything. I can see everything, but only one thing at a time. Like what? Seriously? Um, and you're 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 focusing on the guy, and if you're going to try and read his mind or whatever, then. Surely you can read that he's expelling some kind of force power in your direction or something. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. But um, I think it's it's, it's a good uh, plot thing for you know Kylo to take the lead instead of being the second fiddle. Um, so that that's good. I think he, yeah he maybe he needs that so he can be a better villain because he's he's a pretty lame villain at the moment. He's already he he got beaten by Ray in the first movie. Uh, I think he get he gets beaten in this one. You know, Vader had victories in the first couple of movies, so we, he was actually a threat. He was actually something to um, be concerned. He was a real danger. Kylo's not got that reputation yet. He's just a stroppy guy. Um, um, and of course, there's the whole thing of like, where did Snoke come from? Who is he? What is he about? Why is Kylo listening to him? All that. And. We want that, but yeah, this scene wasn't the place for that. It would it wouldn't make sense in the situation for Snoke to de go on like a big monologue of how you know his life story. It'd, it'd probably be quite boring. What we need is just like we just need little nuggets here and there or something, just to give us some idea of what was going on. Um, but yeah, you obviously don't want a whole ten minute one. So it all started back on. Mon Calamari, uh, I was once a, a Quarren, but I've had all my face tentacles removed, and, um, and which explains these scars. 
this surgery here is when I tried to uh, transition into a Gamorrean, uh, but the horns didn't take. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, we don't, we don't need all that. We just need what 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 connects him to Luke's Jedi Academy. What connects him to Kylo in particular, um, and what he did to convince him to change sides. You know, we've we've got Anakin that had like he was trying to protect Padme, something like that. Just something small, some sort of nugget somewhere. Um, that's all we need. But of course, this scene um, for all the uh, good character stuff that's in it. Which I'm not really watching at the moment, so how good it is, I'm I'm just assuming it is good. <laughs> why 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 when the rest of the film's been so awful? Um it goes into the worst fight scene of all time. Which is um yeah, the Kylo and Ray teaming up against the the Praetor the Praetorian guards, I think they're called. Uh, Royal Guards, whatever. Um So you which is nice, that's really nice to see yeah, the first time you see it, it's like a couple of minutes long or whatever. Um, it's nice to see them team up and take a bunch of faceless, like it's basically stormtroopers with um, vibro blades, uh, but whatever. Uh, they're taking them on, that's nice. Um, I got the impression that they wanted to kind of do something that mimics the fight in episode one, because a, a lot of people say Obi Wan Qui Gon vs. Maul is the best lightsaber fight um, of the saga. Um, Stylistically, not emotionally. I think that emotionally, it's probably Luke and Vader in Return of the Jedi. But for style, um, just for being fun to watch, it'll be episode one all the way. So I think they've gone for for that, plus the emotional stuff. Um, but it doesn't work because so many reasons. Um, there's another guy on YouTube who's done. It's like the video is like about an hour long, and he goes through the whole scene frame by frame, picking out all the problems with it. And I think he still even misses some. Um, so I've, I'm not going to do it here. Uh, but it's basically there's there's um, the classic thing. If you've got the heroes in the middle of a circle, they're surrounded, but the the red guys all take turns to attack them. You've got the other one standing back waiting for their turn. Um, which, I mean, that's in so many films, so you, you, you kind of forgive that. Maybe there's not enough room for them to get out of it. But, um, but the, the odd thing is, like, because they need to keep the, the frame busy, the guys who are standing back waiting for their turn are doing all these flourishes that are completely pointless, and it kind of looks like they're in the fight if you're just watching it breeze by, but when you actually watch it, and, like, you should watch this, what this guy's doing, it's like, why is he way over there just spinning around? What is his problem? He's not. He's not even looking at the battle. What? Um, so you've got that, you've got guys spinning around for no reason, you've got guys throwing weapons away when um, you've got guys um, missing on purpose, uh, you've got guys leaving themselves wide open to attack, um, and then no one pressing at the advantage. Like there's there's so many times where Ray or Kylo should have been killed, but the the guard just either didn't attack or they missed on purpose. It's ridiculous, and then there's obviously there's the the worst defender of all, where there's um the guy who's got two daggers. He's blocks Ray with one, and with the other one he slashes at her stomach. She she should be dead, but then his hand comes across, and there's nothing in his hand. So the the, the knife's just evaporated, clearly been edited out. Um, why leave that in? Why leave that? Why leave, just don't put that bit in the film? Um, then yeah, there's just so much stuff where it's just. So, it's ridiculous. It's a terrible, 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 terribly choreographed scene. Whereas Obi Wan, uh, Qui Gon Maul, I think every, the whole thing is great. Everything is uh, choreographed beautifully, um, and it's such a joy to watch. Well, this this is just nonsense. Do it again. Um, Forty. You got Finn. In, in front of a bunch of stormtroopers. Uh, is this where he fa faces off against Phasma? I mean, I've already said that, and uh, oh, then there's a bit where um, BB-8 turns up, he's hijacked an ATST, and he shoots the place up. I mean, I, I guess that's possible, but I don't, I don't really know why the head of the ATST just 
falls off to reveal him. I guess because he's not tall enough to poke his head out the top like Chewie does and goes, Hey, it's me. Um, I mean, you've got to reveal him somehow, so let's just have the ATST being incredibly flimsy and just. as if that makes any sense. Wow, half an hour in and we've almost finished the movie, good. Uh, angry face Kylo. So that seems to go, oh, here's the Praetorian God battle, this one. Yep, this is the, the worst scene in cinema history, potentially. Um, and um, yeah, this section here is probably where most people, after all this stuff was finished, this was where most people were thinking, oh, the film's over now. But then there's another half an hour. You know, we've, we've had a climax. Why is the film still going? Uh, I, I guess they've got some things to wrap up. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, so you've got... Oh, yeah, Ray's come back. This, this kind of links into what we were saying earlier. Like, if people are hyperspace in and out in small fighters... So she's, she's returned somehow um, from where she was and... No one. To, she's got onto the enemy ship, and no questions asked. She's just on it. They're on the Falcon, and she just came back. Didn't get shot at this guy. Why aren't they all doing that? The Falcon's quite big. The Falcon can carry a lot of people. If the Falcon can get in and out and not be a problem, not be bothered, then why aren't they just? And then it gets to, I, I guess, this point where Holdo kills herself because it's okay when she does it, but not when Finn does it. Um, I suppose this is this something to do with like if bad leadership decisions mean you have to take losses. I don't know, but then, yeah, this this is a controversy of um, galaxy law that I'm 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 awed with. She she does the, the kamikaze thing of hyperspace into the uh, enemy ship. So yeah, why why is this then? Why is this the only time this has ever happened? If this is a thing that you can do. I I was kind of under the impression that hyperspace. Maybe I'm confusing it with well how it works in Star Trek or some other thing, but I thought you kind of like phase out of um, the the the, the uh, what do you call it the dimension, so you can while you're going at that speed you can go through stuff. It's just when you slow down again, then you re-solidify or something. I've heard this somewhere. I might, I might be getting it completely wrong. It might not be, the, but um, so if you're going at that speed and you you don't you don't crash into stuff, how is it she's crashed into that? Is is she crashing while the changes? So she's still solid enough for it to work. I don't know. I don't know how they explain it. I don't think they do explain it. I don't think they make it any sense. But it, anyway, if this is a possibility, then why hasn't it ever been done before? And uh, why is it not weaponized? <clears throat> yeah, so why hasn't it been weaponized? Because um, what she's doing, she's piloting a ship into another ship to destroy it. But, I mean, in this world, it should be really easy for them to just program a missile or set a ship to autopilot to do it or, so, you know, do some something like that so there's no need for a person to be on board. Yeah, program it into a missile so in, so um, so the large ships, the home one or whatever, can carry quite big, bulky missiles that are programmed to, you know, have the power to do light speed jumps. So they just fire the light speed missile into, you know, what, what, there's there's no reason they can't do that. In in um, given what, you know, there's no reason they can't um, do that with. Given that they've show, now showed this, and they've introduced this, because like before, it was impossible. This wasn't a possibility, so no one was doing it. So yeah, this is one complaint that doesn't work. Um, what well, like the complaint works, but the thing in the movie doesn't work. Um, okay, so we're looking at Finn. He's in a. F Again, I'm I'm loosely remembering the movie from the one time I've seen it now. Uh, so th this must be where he defeats Phasma. Wastes her. I mean, this scene was not necessary, was it, really? The movie wastes her enough without him helping. 
Okay, let's go. So two more pages. Excellent. Scene 45. So we're now on the salt planet, which um, I've heard they chose a salt planet because uh, it's like the salt of the um, Star Wars fan base's tears of the trolls or whatever. And, uh, and I think that's why the guy actually said, hmm, it's salt. Um, I, I thought that was just basic exposition of like, because everyone would have thought it was snow unless someone said, hey, this is salt. And that would explain why it goes red for some reason. So yeah, this is where the plan, um, Holdo's plan, comes into action of we're going to this planet, we're all going to shuttle down to the planet and then they're going to carry on chasing the freighters. But then it goes wrong because they look out the window and see the shuttles going down, and they see them all going down um, to the same place and they realise, you know, we, we're not bothered about the ships in particular, we want to kill the people so let's start taking out the pods. Um, so they start doing that. Uh, so it's a far inferior plan to the s subtly shuttling people away in other transports like the Falcon and whatever that thing is that Finn and Rose went on because for some reason the, the First Order didn't care about those ships. Um, and we know that the Empire have the ability to scan pods for life on pods because... Um, it's like one of the first things we see in A New Hope, where they scan the pod and that R2 and 3P are on and they, they leave it because there's no life signs on it. Um, I mean, that's kind of daft because they know droids exist, but uh, well, there's no life on that, so we'll, we'll leave that alone. Whereas here, they could scan the pods and be like, oh, all of the crew are on there, shoot those. Um, so I don't really know what the how they thought they were going to get away with that. Um, and then, yeah, they, they end up getting trapped in this cave um, cornered by the First Order. Cornered by the First Order who now have super attacks because they're, they're the Empire but bigger and better. But not the same. Um, did, we need, did we need the super attacks? The regular attacks were cool enough as they were. I mean, why do you have to... Why? 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 I suppose that it avoids the thing of like, oh it's been 30 years, why haven't they upgraded? Well, okay, they've upgraded, sure, okay, fine. They can do that. No, fine, whatever. Carry on. Um, so yeah, this becomes like a, a familiar thing where that they do the Battle of Hoth. But it's not snow, it's salt, and the attacks are bigger, and instead of snow speeders, they got the weird rickety things that don't have tow cables, so what are they going to do? Why are they sending them out? It's, it's nonsense. Um, they've got to destroy this cannon because the cannon's going to knock down the door and then once the door's down they can come inside and kill all the people that are in there. But then they've done a strange thing where they've got loads of the pilots in the rickety ships that are worthless. Um, they've got a bunch of people in trenches in front of the door. It's like, who's, who's behind the door now? Who are they? Is it just Leia? It's just Leia and a couple of other... Who's behind the door that they're trying to protect now? Um, like, the, the bulk of the force are in front of the door. So basically, the door... The door's job is to protect the rebels. But most of the rebels are in front of the door protecting the door because they don't want the rebels to die. So... Something wasn't really thought through there. Um, then you, yeah, you've got them all going full throttle at the uh, cannon. They want to destroy the cannon, destroy the cannon, destroy the cannon. Um, you've got Finn's moment of having the it's kind of is it, is it not really a redemption arc, but he's he's going to complete his journey of being a sort of cowardly janitor. At the beginning of this film, he's running away again, kind of. Uh, he. He wasn't really the hero that some people thought he was, but here he now he's about to become the hero because he's going to give his life to destroy the cannon. Pretty much just like Holdo gave her life to destroy the Star Destroyer to help everyone else. He's doing pretty much exactly the same thing, but for some reason when he does it, it's wrong. Um, and then 
there's a whole kind of logistical thing that doesn't really make sense. I think I think they uh, is it probably Poe saying, "Okay, fall back, everyone, fall back. We're we're not we're not winning here." So that all of the rickety whatever they're called turn around and start heading back to the door. Except for Finn, who's like, "No, I got this, I got this," and he's full speed going towards the cannon, and somehow. Rose, who's going in the opposite direction, manages to turn around, catch up, get in front of him, and be able to take him out. I don't like how is that physically possible with the speed? Who knows? And um, and the way they crash, how is it that they didn't both die in that crash? Um, and then she says, "The yeah, we don't destroy what we hate; we save what we love." which is immediately followed by the door that they needed to protect being destroyed potentially leading to the deaths of all the people they love so um i mean the message is good but i mean that might have been one of the exceptions to the rule but I don't, they did really want to stop that cannon that was quite important um but hey, well, at least we get Finn for the next adventure, and he is one of the better characters in this whole thing, so that's something. And then we come to Luke. Luke arrives. And this is, um... See, so, you know, I actually like this. So this is something that gets complained about. People are like, why, why didn't Luke just come and do this in person? And that's just missing the point. Because, I mean, Luke says earlier, what, do you think I could just come and take on the whole First Order with a laser sword? And he's like, well... We know that Jedi aren't Superman. They've got they've got powers. They're like superhuman in some ways, but they they're very vulnerable. We saw Order sixty six. We saw like a, a squad of stormtroopers can take a Jedi down, and so he's not going to last long against how these super attacks, regular attacks, ATSTs, Imperial fighters, whatever, how stormtroopers, everything. He can't go out there and he's going to do that. So the projection thing is him coming out and being the legend that the people think he is and it's, it's maybe it's like a intimidation tactic like yeah we've got a jedi we've got we've got luke skywalker look what luke skywalker can do luke skywalker can't really do these things but we don't let that on so he comes out and does what people expect of him even though he's not actually capable of doing those things um so it's good, it's good, and it's yeah, it's him returning to being the hero, and this is the Luke, yeah, this is the Luke Skywalker everyone wanted to see, like the fans wanted to see this, um, the Empire they don't want to see this, but they expect this, the Rebels want to see this because it gives them their hope. It's great, really, it's great, um, and obviously it's perfectly in keeping with the fact that Luke can't actually do this um, specific thing. Um, so yeah, he schools Kylo, and then because um, he's not actually there, then uh, he's just stalling for time, isn't he? So the rebels can get away. He comes, he comes and holds them all back without actually being there, while they all make their escape out of a back door that nobody knew was there except for a diamond fox. Um, so yeah, handy, handy. Yeah, nice. We get to see Luke being the hero. That's great. Um, and I do hope they wreck on the death because that was unnecessary. And we're on to the last section, hooray. Um, 49, we've got Ray lifting all the rocks. I mean, we've seen rocks being lifted before, but she does it better than anyone else has ever had, ever has before. Whether you want to say that's Mary Sue, or whether you going to say that's something to do with this prophecy of her being very special, or this this unimaginable power that her and Kylo have, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Fifty, Luke dies, but let's hope he doesn't. Um, Fifty-one, uh, and the hope is sparked in the universe, despite the fact that they. The survivors of the resistance number about 12, um, not including all of their allies elsewhere, like Lando who's going to turn up in the next one. Um, 
yeah, so who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in episode nine? Yeah, because this one didn't really end with the cliffhangers that episode five had uh, with uh, Yohan and Carbonite, um, I am your father, uh, all this stuff that's like, whoa, whoa what's going to happen next? Um, Episode 2 even was like, you know, now in Episode 3 we're going to see Anakin become Vader, so that was the big thing, we're going to see the end of the Jedi, we're going to see the rise of the Empire, we're going to see all this stuff, so it's like, yes, we've got to see this. This is like, okay, so we've got 12 Rebels about that, something like that. Um, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? That's, that's the only question. I mean, apart from all of the questions in the, the, the various mystery bags, but do we even care anymore at this stage? Um, yeah, so it'd be interesting to see what happens with episode 9. Um, I mean, if they follow the pattern of what they're doing, it's just going to be a remake of Return of the Jedi. We've already seen from the trailers that the Emperor's got something to do with it. He's going to be a feature. Uh, they're going to be on the wreckage of the Death Star 2, I think. Um, so there's that. Um, there's that scene. They're on the, what looks like Jabba's skiffs. Uh, in the desert with it they see the stormtroopers with jetpacks and they they all say oh they fly now which is kind of dumb because they've been flying since um i mean Django had a jetpack in episode two um jetpacks aren't new technology so i i don't yeah you know, we haven't seen stormtroopers fly in the movies but we i think we saw them in the clone wars cartoon they've definitely been flying in games for so yeah, since the Clone Wars, they've been flying. If you count games and comics and stuff, so there's such a weird thing that well, they've not noticed it before because they definitely have noticed it before. If you take any canon or non-canon expanded stuff into account, um, but yeah, uh, for me, the first half an hour, the first act of um, Return of the, Return of the Jedi is peak Star Wars, where you've got the whole gang together. They go on this mission that's kind of a bit convoluted and like they're all doing their bit and they're all working together and it's a massive great adventure and it's just like that that whole Jabba's Palace sequence, you could end it when they fly away. That's, that's just an, that's a fun episode on its own. That's, I, I, I love that I love whole thing. I love that whole thing. It's great. So if we're following that pattern, then the first half hour of episode nine is going to be amazing. Um... Which that could be what they're doing. You've you've got the whole gang on the skiff, doing something. So they're on a desert planet on, on a, something that looks very much like the, the what what they had at the Sarlacc pit. The whole gang is together doing something. Let's hope that's fantastic. And then that's going to move on to some other stuff with the Death Star and the Emperor. So it's just again it's just mirroring what happened before. Um, there's going to be something about. Ray being tempted by the dark side. I don't know. I don't know. Do we care? I'm going to see what happens. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be watching that tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, I'm watching it tomorrow. Um, so, I imagine there's a possibility I'll like it tomorrow, but then the day after, because this is what happened with them. Um, with it, with this one, with Force Awakens, I watched it. I came out the cinema, kind of buzzing, and then took a little while for things to sink in. And then I'm like, wait, yeah, hang, hang on, there's a lot wrong here. This is they, they tricked me somehow. There was, there was some kind of Jedi mind trick, and the and I've just kind of woken up from it. Um, so I, I I can I can see that being a possibility tomorrow that I'll be like, well, yeah, it's Star Wars, yay! But then I don't know. Um, so far, hearing that I think there's been previews from critics are saying that the first hour or so is just lots and lots of exposition, just people talking. So that that doesn't sound like fun. And then the the emperor stuff gets really weird. So I don't know what that means. Um, I don't want yeah. The reason I'm seeing it early is because I want to avoid spoilers because you know you know it's going to be spoilers like almost immediately. Um, Prepare for yeah. Prepare tomorrow. Prepare to see Twitter covered in Lando dies, or whatever, because there's probably coming in it. Um, Leia's going to be in it. I think she she'd already recorded stuff, or they're repurposing scenes from this movie or something like that. 
Um, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exactly looking forward to it. It's more of a curiosity at this stage. Like, can they save it? Can they fix it? Or how much worse can it get? Um, so again, hey, I'll leave it there. I tentatively say this is the last one of these. Um, if I do come back to it to pick up from where I left off, it's going to have the slightly different flavour of things I've been questioning at this stage may have answers. Um, so it'll be different. It'll be it'll be a bit different because of that. So that's why I've done this one. Um, but yeah, Rise of Skywalker tomorrow. Oh, that's a that's a nice theory I've heard actually. I'm going to throw that in here. Um, so everyone's asking which Skywalker is it going to, is Luke rising? Is it, is it going to turn out that Rey is a Skywalker? Is the Skywalker that rises Ben? Is Ben going to come back to the light? What's the Skywalker? Uh, but the idea I've heard that I quite like is that because Luke was saying I want to end the Jedi, but maybe instead of so he's going to end the Jedi and start a new order called the Skywalkers. So Skywalker is no not not going to be the family name anymore. It's going to be you know the Sith versus the Skywalkers. Um, or the Wrens versus the Skywalkers, or whatever. That that's I, I quite like that idea. Um, I'm I'm on board with uh, Red Letter Media's theory of time travel. Uh, I think he um, Mike made a really good case there about <coughs> how it's quite possible Episode Nine is going to have a lot of time travel in it. If it does, I'm going to hate it. I don't think time travel it, it, it belongs in Star Wars. Well, apparently, uh, this Rebels has already introduced it, so it's got precedent in canon. Um, so that's how the Emperor's going to be back, because they're going to go back in time and see him. Um, Luke's lightsaber gets destroyed in this, I think, but you see Rey with it in the next movie, so she's going to have to get that somehow. Um, and the, there was a few other clues as well. It's like, how, how do you have this? If um, you know, because oh uh, yeah, the big one was the Millennium Falcon's uh, satellite dish. Because in this this movie, the one before it was it's rectangular, but in nine, it's a circle like it was in the original trilogy. So have they gone back in time, or are, or are all these flashbacks? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to be. We're going to find out. I'm going to find out tomorrow. Maybe you'll find out. And well. I'll leave it there. I'm hoping I haven't forgotten anything that I wanted to say. I've been fairly thorough. Um, I haven't got a script on this, you may have noticed. So if I've forgotten anything, that's just the way it goes. Um, so yes, I hope you've enjoyed my ramblings and maybe they'll continue. Maybe we'll do this all again with uh, episode 9. Maybe I'll go back to episode seven and do it with that. Who knows what's going to happen next? I would. What I would like to do is um, do it to the the Clone Wars cartoon because I've got so many issues with the Clone Wars cartoon, and that's a whole that's five seasons worth of episodes to moan about. So that's that's a commitment. That um, yep. Okay. All right. So see you next time or not. May the force be with you.